I'd like to uh, thank John Moore for going more than 120 pages deep into the budget. Uh, I know I didn't know that. <laughs> With regards to the playground, as a father of a five-year-old, I'm happy this is finally being talked about. I don't know how it hasn't happened to this uh, point. When Belmar had to rebuild an entire boardwalk, they rebuilt four playgrounds for our former council. Why did this take so long? Okay. Finally, and most importantly, I know all of you are aware that near 400 Aspen Park voters have been disenfranchised by the Monmouth County Board of Elections in our last city council election. This matter is currently before Judge O'Brien in Monmouth County Superior Courts. A number of those voters who were disenfranchised are here in the audience tonight. Uh, Mayor Campbell, I know that you've said publicly that you support these ballots being counted, even if it means you losing your seat, and I appreciate your commitment to our representative democracy in that matter and the principles that we stand for. So given this, I'm requesting that a resolution be put forth tonight during the regular public meeting that the governing body file an amicus brief with the court supporting that those ballots be opened and counted. And I would like to know, Mayor Campbell, if you would be willing to put forth this a motion for this resolution. I will be conferring to our attorney to get advice on that. If the, that motion is put forth, if it is seconded and a roll is called, Councilman Quinn, would you be supportive of that? I'm supportive of, of counting proper valid ballots, yes. Councilman Brayden? I'm going to vote on the 16th. <laughs> yes or no question. If you would support no, a resolution being passed, the file now is free. No, it's free. No, it's free. No, it's free. Okay. Deputy okay. Mayor? Again, I'm confirming my lawyer on this, but at this point, just to bring it up very quickly and have this uh, as an ordinance, absolutely not. Well, wouldn't it be an ordinance? It'd be a, re a resolution to file an amicus brief with the court in support of Mr. Harris's case to have the more than 320 ballots in question open and then the 80 or so accounted for. No. No. Got some more? Mm. I've said from day one, and I'll say to this over with, I think every proper ballot should be open and should be counted. Thank you. I come to question, um, oh, man, not man, one. Councilman Moore, your question about the over $3 million in RCA money. I, as a resident and a landlord in Asbury Park, have used RCA funds to rehabilitate projects. Mr. Reedy said he would like to take that money and put it on the Springwood Avenue development knowing that that money is sorely needed on the west side of Asbury Park. To qualify for RCA money, basically you need someone in a house making the low poverty level, which we have an abundance of in Asbury Park. That money is to improve the quality of life for residents who cannot afford to improve their own apartments. Obviously, it gives landlords $15,000 per unit, which means if you have, a land, if you have an apartment house, let's say four units in it, and you have four people, four families in your house making the low poverty level, you can get $60,000 of free money as long as you hold on to that property for 10 years to rehabilitate your house. $3 million on the west side of Asbury will be a fantastic shot in the arm. I'm asking the mayor and council to form a committee tonight made up of the planning board, a member of city council, and residents of the west side of Asbury Park so we can review how the RCA money has been spent and further give recommendations to the city as to how we can better spend it to improve the west side of Asbury Park. Thank you.
We'll address that question when the budget gets adopted. Okay, then now I have a a citizen review board because look, the police are messing with our good children. They out, they out here harassing the good kids and letting the criminals get away with crime. I'm not against the police, only the bad ones. So I don't really want you to think about this because the police department is in disarray right now. I can't, when I was here the other night, we, I couldn't even get uh, to the hole with nobody because you got this number we have to call this person and that person. What, why can't we have, like it used to be, a dispatcher right here where we can speak directly to somebody that, that, that makes people believe and don't want to pursue what they need to pursue? So, I don't know, but somebody needs to, like, get the PC part of the chat right now. That's it. <laughs>
are not going to support in any form, shape, or fashion the name calling and the blatant disrespect of this man. Right. about the oldest trick in the book. The oldest trick in the book was the disenfranchisement of a minority community. Oh. Oh. The, the failure to count that those values has disenfranchised the vote of the African American community. Right. So let's get it really straight. Now let's get, let's get it straight. Let's point the blame where the blame truly does lie. Because that voice has been silenced. So until those votes are actually counted, we don't even know really who the highest vote getter is sitting on this council. Mm. It may not be even any of you. <laughs> so we need to keep that in mind. And there is no law that says the highest vote getter has to be the elected mayor or the deputy mayor. If that were the case, if there was a law on the book, you would not have to affirm the, the mayor by vote in, inside of a swearing in session. So that's what I'm saying to you. Yes, we need to focus. We can no longer afford to be divided. And there are many ways for people to serve in this community. There are planning boards, there are zoning boards, all of which we are underrepresented. Thank you. My name is Felicia Simmons. I live at 1410 Summerfield Avenue. This Friday night, there was another shooting um, on my block where a young man, I opened my door to see cops and police, and a young man shot in the back laying in my yard. I sat there and prayed that that young man would not die in my front yard. I asked the police officer that night, how many shootings have to happen within one block of each other? There's been a lease, you can stand at my corner, which is, they tore my, my gate open and see four shootings that's happened here in the last six months. When is the city council, honestly, and since that shooting, I've not seen a police anywhere near that area. Put a camera, put a police officer. How many shootings have to happen near a school? This is in front of two schools. How many, how my son has to live here? How many kids can't play after dark? When is this going to be a priority? Is this town is a mile, 1.4 miles. There is no excuse why there is this kind of violence on one side in one exact area of this town where it is not being addressed in an immediate fashion. I should not have to have bullet holes in my house, blood in my yard, children dying on the corner on a regular basis. After one, it should be a cop there. There is none. There's shootings in school grounds while school is happening and no one is addressing it. What is the problem? Why can't you say, I can say, police officer, go to that corner. But there's police officer, my son's father lives on Summerfield, I mean Sunset. He gets stopped on a regular basis for walking home at night because he happens to live on the right side of town where there's police officers. Why is that not happening on my side of town? I work just as much.
thank you. I'm not going to... I'll step away from the mic, but I'm not going to finish. Everybody, all people, gay, straight, black, white, Hispanic, everybody is one person, it's one piece, stop. and we all should be counted.
buildings are still in play for us to form, and it's budget, it's quality of life, it's addressing some of the things that you're talking about. So, so FYI, I, my hope is that those committees that we talked about um, to address some of the things that you're talking about and, and having the community involved in them is still in play. Good. All right. No, no, we just made a motion. At the San Grand Asbury Grand Avenue Asbury Park. I'm sorry, I'm a little worked up. I came here to talk about parking and code enforcement, and I'm not gonna because of all that's happening here. Um, I just, you know, want you to let you know that I've been a member of this community since 1999, and I came to Asbury Park from New Brunswick, which is a diverse community, and, and I love Asbury Park. And I love all the people in Asbury Park, and I, you know, I really want to see harmony in this town. I really do. And yeah, I don't care who's the mayor, who's the council, whatever. What I'm looking forward to is change. Okay, so instead of looking at the front of this book, I'm gonna look at the back of this book. And the back of this book is a blank sheet of paper. And that's where we should all start right now. Okay, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the question was about filing an amicus brief, and that was what I was objecting to. I had already stated when I saw some of the names that were Refused, but actually they were told to me, I didn't understand it. So, of course, any legitimate vote should count. That, that should go without saying. Also, um, some things were said tonight about background deals with processing. Our process is what it is. The people elect like the council, the council elect like the mayor. That's by statute, ladies and gentlemen. Now, here's the thing if we don't like that, if we don't like the form of government that we have, let's change it. And now we've got that opportunity, don't we? Thank you. But don't get up here and make accusations towards people that have served this community for years before a lot of others even lived here and make false accusations. Thank you.